Welcome back to Casual Collectors. I'm Steel Wolf. And Spider Kid. And today we're bringing you a review of the Marvel Studios Infinity Saga Iron Spider Helmet from Avengers Endgame from Hasbro's Prop Replica Legend Series. So we pre-ordered and purchased this helmet at GameStop.com for the price of $124.99. And for some reason, in Southern California, he's not even on shelves yet. All other major retailers only had the helmet available as pre-orders. You can also find them in other retailers that are online, like for example, Big Bad Toy Store, Dorkside Toys. I'm pretty sure they have them in stock. I know that we checked Big Bad Toy Store and they had the helmet up for $129.99. So you can definitely pick them up from them or try to find them at a retailer. So this is another prop replica from the Hasbro Legends series. And as you remember or recall, they've also done the Iron Man helmet, the War Machine helmet, the Iron Punisher. They've also done an Ant-Man. They've done a Black Panther. And they've also done the Infinity Gauntlet, Thor's Hammer, the Stormbreaker, and soon to be released, the Nano Gauntlet, as well as the Eye of Agamotto. Enough with all the prices and numbers. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at this box. Okay, so now looking at the box, we can see the front of the box shows a nice picture of the Iron Spider helmet with Avengers Endgame and the nice little Infinity Saga logo. Now if we look to the side, we can see, again, the Iron Spider helmet, but this time with the eyes glowing red. And if we look to the back, you can see another picture of the Webhead helmet and, an and then the inside of the helmet and what it looks like. And then we see this nice little light up feature with the eyes, which we will get to that later. And if we look to the other side, we can see again the other mode, which are the eyes are blue. And if we look to the top, we can see again showing off the, the eye light up feature with Avengers Endgame and Infinity Saga. Now if we go to the bottom, we don't see much. And um, yeah. Alright, so with that all said, let's suit up. So besides the helmet, this is the other things that you get in the box. You have your instruction booklet, which basically shows you how to put the batteries in and how to adjust the helmet to your size. And then you also have some important battery information and also a smaller card that has Hasbro's address on there. Alright, so here's what you're going to find inside the booklet here. You're going to find instructions on how to open the compartment case for the batteries. You're going to see how to actually open the helmet itself to put it on. And you're going to see how to cycle through the different modes that the eyes have. And here we go, the Iron Spider helmet out of the package. And right away, just wow. wow. And let me tell you, this thing just looks way better in person than what this camera is doing justice to it. Because it is a lot more brighter red than what the camera is showing. Yeah, it just looks incredible. Very, very nice. As you can see too there, you can see all those sculpted lines for the webbing on the mask. That came out fantastic. And it looks like plating. It doesn't look like they're just, you know, line work for a costume. It's definitely plating, so it goes with the Iron Spider theme. And it's not, it doesn't look plastic, but it looks like real metal, and it looks like all like nice together. Absolutely. I mean, this thing could have fooled me that it was plastic. I mean, it, it definitely has that metal look to it. The shine on it is gorgeous. Now, let's go ahead and get some different angles here so you guys can see. Here you have it on the side there, just again, looking absolutely amazing. Just all that line work looks really good. Although it looks like ours has a little scuff mark on it. Yeah, just like right there. Looks like it's a scuff. That's kind of disappointing, but you know what? Regardless, this thing just looks cool. Very, very cool. Here's what it looks like in the back, and the line sculpt is still going on there through the back and still looking amazing I mean there's not a lot to this helmet you know to go in and you know and describe a lot it's just but it just looks really good here we have the other side here and again looks just as good as the other side there and what's pretty neat though is that right around here you have that whole little area for what looks like they made it for the ear there so that's kind of like you know showing like where your ear would be I guess you know but it just looks cool and I like how like it's all like glossy like it's like bright red and 
I like like um like how it looks like overall. Like yeah, there's not much detail to it, but just a standalone, it is pretty cool. Yeah, it just I think to sum up what Spider Kid's trying to say, it just looks bad ass. Those colors, I mean that red is just so vibrant. Alright, let's turn them back around here and take a closer look at these lenses on the eyes here. Alright, so as you can see, we have kind of this like hexagonal pattern inside the eyes, and those are like painted a white color. But with the with the mask off, they're gonna look white. But once you turn the mask on, you're gonna see that they'll turn blue and then they'll go to a red. Then they vary from a lighter red to a lighter blue, darker and whatnot. Now around the eyelids here though, this is kind of this is all sculpted here and they look like they're kind of like uh, shutters that would help close the eye. Now unfortunately uh, the eyes do not move. Like they don't blink, they don't squint, they don't do any of that. What I think is kind of disappointing. Oh, absolutely. I mean, when I first saw this thing, I thought that the eyes were going to be able to blink on their own or something, but unfortunately, they do not. All this mask really does, or I should say helmet really does, is just light up. But just to have it on your shelf, amazing. amazing. I mean, either way, it still looks pretty cool. Yeah, like I said, amazing. amazing. No pun intended, but amazing. amazing. Yeah, there's the other eye there on that side, and that looks just as good. I just really wish they would have incorporated that whole feature of the eyes being able to close and blink and whatnot. That might have been more expensive, but we saw that the eye of Agamotto is able to open and close on its own with the push of a button, so why couldn't this thing do the same? Okay, let's go ahead and take a look on the inside of this helmet to see what it looks like here. So right away, you can see that they sculpted the inside of the mask. You have more of that lining. You have that kind of soft rubbery padding right there for like the area where your forehead and your eyes and your nose is going to rest. That way it rests a little bit more comfortably. And again, I, I like the sculpting on the inside. It makes it look a little more cooler. Like, like that technology kind of like looking to it. Yeah, no, it definitely gives it the sense that it's some kind of robotic helmet, which is what they're, the look that we're going for, you know? That's what it is. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, so to further elaborate on what Spider Kid was talking about, as you can see right there on the inside, they got all those cool little patterns, but they just look like a bunch of circuitry, you know, kind of things like that that were sculpted inside of that. There's that little groove right there for the ear to rest in. And at the very top there, that's where the top of your head would rest back there. And that's like a soft little like cloth padding that's supposed to kind of give you more comfort for the top of your head. And then you also have some more of that soft padding there on the back, which is going to sit right on the back of your head there towards the base of your neck. But that's what it looks like inside there. Now, to get this bad boy on, if it doesn't fit your head right away, you can always split this right here to kind of give you more of that leeway so that you can crack it open and then place your head inside. Just be careful though because this stuff right here, it's like a soft cloth. There is something behind it which looks like it might be a plastic piece that's there, but in between, you can see it right there on the camera, right there, right there in the middle there. You can see that there's two plastic bands but that middle portion right there, that's basically cloth. So if you're not careful, you can probably just poke right through there and make a hole, which will definitely lose to the aesthetic of the helmet. But, you know, you pull this guy back and you can even split it. You can split it from back here to kind of help you so that you can get it over your head. And then, you know, it all clicks right back into place once it's on there. So that's a way to help get your head in there, just in case, you know, you're trying to put it on and it's not fitting right away. As you can see, it breaks apart all right here. Now that we saw some details and close-ups of this guy, let's go ahead and figure out how to get these batteries in so that we can light it up and see how it looks. All right, let's go ahead and start by popping off the lid here. Now, the thing about it is that if you ask me, they hit it very well, but it's right there on the top there. You kind of have to push downward and towards you, and it pops right open. And as you can see, there's a little battery compartment. Now we're going to use a Phillips to go ahead and unscrew it. All right, now with that unscrewed, we're just going to pull the lid open. And as you can see there, boom, there we have the compartment for the battery. And as you can see with the compartment of the battery open, we can see where we're going to put our double A's at. 
and just reverse the steps to get it all back into place. There we are. All right, the batteries are in. We're gonna go ahead and put this guy on and test to see how it fits. And we're gonna go ahead and test those lights. But before we do that, I just wanna do a close up to show you guys where the button is to actually activate the lights. So let's take a look here. All right, so if you see here, right where my thumb is, right there, that's the button that's going to activate the lights. Okay, it's right actually by the chin. So as you can see, there's the front of the mask there, or the helmet, and the button would sit right on the cheek there. Kind of close to the chin and in between the cheek. So here we have Spider Kid going to demonstrate on how to put on the Iron Spider helmet. Now as you can see, for him it was very easy just to slide his head in there. He didn't have to pry it open or anything. Nope. Now, can you breathe in there pretty good? Is it hot in there, I bet? No? For me, it would get hot. I know with the other helmets, it got hot. All right, so let's go ahead and have a turn. Let's see you turn, turn, turn. Very nice on the side there. Very nice. All right. Now, is it easy to access the button to turn it on? Yeah, okay, cool. Now go ahead and talk so we can hear you. Testing. All right, so you can still hear him pretty well in there. All right, now I don't know if you guys see this, but in the camera here, I'm picking up right there where his mouth would be. It looks like there's a square piece right there that is sticking out for some reason. I don't know if they did that intentionally so that sound can travel through, or maybe so that he can breathe easier. I don't know which is which, but that definitely is kind of sticking out right now like a sore thumb. All right, so let's go ahead and show you guys some shots of me with this thing on. Okay, so here's Steel Wolf. He's going to try it on now. Yeah, you can't have glasses on when you wear these things. All right, so for me, it's a little difficult to get my big head in here. you this much it's a little hard to see I mean right now I have the light on in here but it's definitely a little bit difficult to see if you're claustrophobic this ain't gonna work for you it can get a little hot in here but it feels good it doesn't feel loose it feels good on my head I don't feel like it's gonna go anywhere it feels really good it feels nice and secure that's for sure can you breathe yeah I can breathe just fine so this is what it would look like on an on a adult head. All right, so we're going to go ahead and show you guys what this helmet looks like with the light feature turned on. So we're going to go ahead and dim these lights so it will get a little dark. And that looks really cool. That looks very cool. Can you see through that right now? Or is it a little hard to see? A little hard. A little hard? All right. Let's go ahead and cycle to the next and that, I couldn't really tell much of a change on the camera, but if you're looking at it in person, it definitely looks like it went a little lighter, so it's not as bright. Just lowered the brightness a little bit. Okay, go to the next one. And that was even a little more dimmer. That's the red setting now, the instant kill mode, and that looks cool. That looks very cool. It almost looks like the red hood, almost. Very cool. All right, second to the next one. And again, you can't really tell on the camera here, but in real person here, it definitely got a little dimmer. And this one should do it the same, go a little more dimmer. And that is your off mode right there. Now, as for when you're actually wearing the helmet, for me as being an adult, I mean, I like to think that I have an average size head, but I mean, you guys just saw earlier, I don't know, you guys can, you know, tell me your opinions on what size my head looks to you but to me if I feel like mine's an average size you know and when I'm wearing the helmet it definitely felt comfortable it didn't feel like there was plastic pieces poking me or making it anything uncomfortable um, I didn't really feel the padding but I guess that's what it's supposed to do you're not supposed to feel it just it's just there for extra cushion you know 
but uh, the pieces that you know kind of hug your eye sockets or your or the area around your eyes and that hugs your nose that felt very comfortable too it felt like I was wearing you know maybe like a kind of like the PlayStation VR goggles it kind of felt like that a little bit you know but it was comfortable um, the downside though that at least for me I tend to get very hot easily and in that helmet the temperature was rising. I was starting to get very warm in there, you know, so maybe if they could have incorporated some vents or something, but it, that might take from the aesthetic. I don't know, but uh, it definitely felt hot. Now, as for seeing through the visors themselves, the lenses, it was a little difficult to see out of them. Now, that could have just been too because our lighting was literally right in our face, so that might actually, you know, be why, but uh, it did feel like it was a little bit difficult to see out of. Now, I've only seen myself having a Jimmy Neutron size head, but when I was wearing this, it actually, like, it didn't, like, it felt comfortable, but it felt a little bit loose. Not too loose, but for my head, it felt, like, comfortable, and I will breathe through it and see through it fine, and it didn't really get as hot for me. Overall, I think it was still good. Yeah, no, I, I think that they definitely should have added that feature that the Iron Man helmet had where it was like a band that kind of sits on the crown of your head and you're able to adjust it so that, you know, people with smaller heads, it can fit nice and snug on them versus it being loose. So there you have it. Now let's go ahead and go ahead and give this guy a rating here. You'll be able to see our rating system here on the left. And I think uh, based off everything that I've seen so far and all the little details, I think I'm going to go ahead and give it a rating of epic. epic. Now, the reason why I'm giving it an epic rating is because it looks absolutely amazing. I mean, it should have been legendary, honestly, but the reason why it got bumped down a peg is because I think that for the price point of 124 bucks plus tax, they could have incorporated the eye movements you know let us get the squinting motions you know the wide-eyed expression now mind you maybe we won't be able to control it they could have it like on a cycle you know but I think that they could have worked that in there you know and still keep it at hundred and twenty four dollars I mean look at the upcoming release of the eye of Agamotto from this same legend line on the eye of Agamotto it's able to actually open and close to reveal the gem and then hide the gem and then you can even take the gem out and yes it lights up and everything so and that's only fifty dollars so I think that for hundred and twenty four dollars they could have incorporated some kind of mechanism to allow us to change the eyes Heck, even give us the ability to just push a button on the side of the head to close or make the eyelids squint kind of like what they did with the Black Panther helmet on that helmet you were able to push a button and the eyelid visors would be able to swoosh upwards so that you can actually see your eyes just like in the movie but you know they didn't do any of that all they did was just give us lights now another thing that I really like about this thing is that it is very very movie accurate I mean this thing looks like it was ripped out of the film itself you know we had to even go back and confirm all that if there was any kind of texture details that they missed on the helmet itself but no after looking back at Endgame and getting close-ups of it you know we didn't see any noticeable textures that were added to the helmet so what you see here is basically what Peter Parker wore in the film but yes, so the, the lack of, you know, the eyes not moving, you know, I think that was my biggest, you know, problem with this was I really wish they would have incorporated that. You know, I don't know what else they could have added to it. I mean, I don't really care for the sounds. I mean, I guess we could have had some Peter Parker quotes, but that kind of feels way too like, you know, uh... I don't know, it feels like those masks that you see on the on the toy aisle, you know, that's aimed for younger kids. I feel like that's what it's aimed for if you add like little voiceovers or quotes and stuff like that. Maybe they could have added some web, you know, sound effects, but again, it kind of feels like it would just be too kiddish, you know, and not necessarily collectible wise. I don't know, but that's just my opinion. I do think they should have given it though some kind of feature like how the so Iron Man helmet like had where up. you can pull off the visor, you know, and it makes like, you know, those mechanical sounds, you know, up. something like that I think would have been cool. Maybe not necessarily to pull the whole face plate off, but at least like, for example, the battery compartment spot, I think that would have been cool. They would have 
added sound effects that when you pull the battery compartment off, you know, it'll make some kind of like mechanism sounds, you know, electronics or whatnot, you know, something like that. Or oh, heck, even giving us like a little button to push and we can hear, you know, the little AI voice that uh, talks to Peter Parker or something. I don't know. I'm just kind of fishing here, but I just wish that they would have given us more than what they gave us. But again, don't get me wrong. It is awesome, especially once you have it in person in your hands and heck, even wearing it. It is awesome. So the rating I would give it would be epic. epic. The reason why is because... Well, I wish the eyes would move, and overall, I think the main problem with it, which what I'm not saying now may only work for the homecoming one, but I think some of it should have been like cloth, like an actual like mask, but it's more movie accurate because it's more of a helmet than a mask, but other than that, at least for the sound, when you put it on Insta Kill, you would hear Karen say Insta Kill like in do like it does in the movie. Activating instant kill. And no, 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 again, no, no. I would wish that the eyes would move. Another one I would wish they did. I wish that they would give you that option to have the eyes have their own certain pattern. So kind of like how the Avengers Campus goggles are, to where you could put a certain pattern, so it will follow that pattern. So like red to blue, and then something like that. So Spider Kid has something for his custom corner today. Let's see what he has for ideas for this helmet. So you can do two customs. One will be to make it more of a battle damage type mask or helmet, whatever you want to call it. And just like like some scars and something like that. And another one you can do is to have it to where it looks like a little more, more of a brighter kind of color to match the comic book and the overall movie look to it. And that'll do it for Spider Kids Custom Corner. All right, casual collectors, that's going to do it for our review on the Hasbro Prop Replica Legend Series Iron Spider Helmet from the films Infinity War and Endgame. So, till next time, I'm Steel Wolf and Spider Kid. Continue collecting, and remember, stay, stay casual. casual.